One of just two home games of the month of January is tonight for the Michigan State women's basketball team. Both these teams coming in at 1-1 one one through the first two games of Big Ten play. Northwestern lost to Minnesota, then dominated Illinois. For Michigan State, a dominating win against Indiana. And then, Mo, their last game on Sunday, a 61-58 loss against Rutgers. And that was as hard fought a battle as you'll see in the Big Ten. And we can expect that the rest of the season as well. The ball is tossed in the air. The tip is won by the Northwestern Wildcats. And here we go between the Spartans and the Wildcats at the Breslin Center. Ag the offensive board. She turns around and knocks it down. A jumper from Brandy Ag gets the scoring started tonight. Ten to shoot. Lob to the right elbow. Allen into the cutting. Collie reverse layup. Got it. The foul. How about that bucket by Shay Collie. Here's Shay Collie. Hand off to Gusser. Right wing three. Book it. Second three for Lexi Gusser. She's got eight points in the first quarter. Here's Shea Cauley into the offensive zone. Over to McCutcheon in the right corner. Bounce into the post. Holly makes the contested catch. Turns around and lays it in. Nice hands by Nia Holly. Along the free throw line, she hands it off to Gusser. Goes inside, gets swarmed, and banks it off the glass somehow. Not an ideal look, but Lexi Gusser able to finish. Hamilton looking to inbound. And she lobs it out toward the right wing, and it's stolen. Shea Cauley in transition to the rack, and she finger rolls it up and in. Ooh, that ball thought about falling away, but instead it does slip through the twine, and Shea Cauley is five for five to start the game. Spartans with the basketball, Wildcats on the defensive end of the purple uniform. Dania Holly at the free throw line. She tries to turn the corner, instead kicks to Gussert, and Gussert knocks down the three from the right wing. So Michigan State, a dominant first half of play. They lead Northwestern 50 to 22 at halftime. Shot clock didn't reset, two and then one. The jumper is good. Mia Holly hits it from the right baseline just as the shot clock expires. There's the buzzer and it's a final. Spartans had four players in double figures. Shea Cauley led the way with 18 points. Taryn McCutcheon a much needed 16 points today. Lexi Gussert with a powerful 14, and Brandy Agee with 12, most of that in the second half. So a very strong win for Michigan State. In four double figures, almost five. Maybe you had a double-double. Good nice. stuff. Yeah. Um, good stuff. We ran better. We had 20 assists on 29 baskets, so things you were talking about setting people up. I thought you guys did a great job defensively. Um, keeping them out of a rhythm, especially early, and then settling in um, on the switches, it bothered them. Okay, they couldn't get into a rhythm, so it was good stuff. All right, um, good, it's good. Good to win at home, right? Good to make this happen. Embrace my three, one, two, three, embrace, embrace it. it. Across the line with seven. Brittany gets a screen to the top. Back to Satara, to Keen. Open jumper for the win. Yes, she made it, she made it. Spartans take the lead. Kalisha Keene hits the biggest shot of her career. And the Spartans take a three point lead. My dad is who actually got me started playing. He brought me like one Saturday. He was like, we're going to go to this house league event. And I was absolutely terrified. I did not want to go because it was all guys and I was the only girl. Um, and I started dreading it a little bit, but then I started to love it, made some friends, and it was um, kind of what kickstarted me into loving the game. She's just got such a high IQ. I mean, I think that's the one thing that I will say about Cal, besides her obvious talent. I mean, she really, really understood the game. She saw it in slow motion, and I think some of the best players you ever coach can kind of see the game in slow motion. And then, of course, she was a Canadian, so they have a quick shot clock over there. So she was a quick trigger face-up four man that um, really was hard to guard. And so she brought us a lot of offense in a lot of different ways. Winning the, uh, the Big Ten Championship was a lot of fun. Uh, it was such a long grind, grinded out season, and I think just the girls being able to win with the class that I came in with um, was really exciting. And then that game uh, where we beat Duke, the number one seed, that was awesome. Uh, when everybody rushed the court and I was like, I'm crying and I don't even <laughs> realize you know, that I'm crying right now. And then being able to hit that game winning shot against Iowa was super cool. Um, it was like an out of body experience. She's the only Big Ten player of the year ever in the history of Michigan State women's basketball number one. So that in and of itself is a pretty big accomplishment. Kids that play with that kind of passion and energy are, you're, I'm just drawn to as a coach. Keen got it at the elbow, turns, faces, pops it. Yes, and a foul! Kalisha Keen with the hoop and the harm.
that I went overseas and I had a pretty good first year. I got to play in the Euro League and make some good money. And then I, the following season, I was able to go and play with um, the San Antonio Stars for a little bit. It was kind of like my journey was just always a little bit different. I've always told her, like, you need to be in coaching. You have a great basketball mind. You're going to be an amazing coach. Just let me know when you're ready. I'd love to have you as a GA. Kind of my decision why I just knew I was ready was I knew that my body was kind of starting to, like, give me that sign of, like, it's time. And then I started working in the summer um, with some players, and I was like, wow, like, I really enjoy seeing the growth that they're making. and. I'm not really like missing it as much. So I was like, this is this is the time. So I gave Coach Merchant a call and she was like, absolutely. And like two weeks later I was here. Um, and it's been cool because it's almost like everything has changed, but nothing has changed. I can't tell you how much Cal's already done for me in this team. Uh, you know, she came in and she kind of clicked with the team automatically. I mean. Um, she earned our respect very quickly, as she should have. I mean, she's a very experienced player. I see a little bit of me in, in each and every one of them in a different way, and sometimes it's frustrating because I'm trying to tell them kind of what not to do because I did it and messed up, but people learn in different ways, and I remember being that way myself. Um, it's amazing seeing the growth in them from like the summertime until now with like workouts, drills, that kind of thing. And it's cool being able to share like my experience with them um, to help them along with their journey. Her personality fits really well with the team. Um, she helps us on and off the court. She's always there for us. She's a good friend. She's a good coach. Um, I don't think we could have asked for anybody better. I get so hyped when I see them like do great things or especially when they they do a move that they've been practicing and they do it in the game. I'm like, oh my gosh, like we just did that. We work on floaters with each other. She helps me with that every day. And like every time I hit a floater, I'll look to the bench and she'll like be going crazy. She'll stand up. Uh, so I know that she has those little things with every single player on the team. And it's awesome because it helps everybody else get hyped for each other. I tell them every day, like greatness doesn't chase you. You have to chase it every single day. And, to be a pro, it's about like production. It's about like making shots, making plays. And it doesn't always have to show like in your points, but you can do things like in different ways in the sense of like getting steals, getting assists, um, even like how you carry yourself off and on the court. Like you have to carry yourself as a professional every day. I, I do think that it's helping them a lot having all three of us here because we can relate to how they feel as players on and off the court because we were in their shoes. Um, so I think it's helping them to understand that we're always coming from, you know, a good place, whether it's, you know, sometimes we have to be tougher on them, um, but they've, they've really been responding really well. They really know because they're fresh out of this stage in their life, they really know mentally the toll it takes on you, um, the grind of the game every single day of Big Ten season, so them coming out of that and only being a year, a couple years out, um, it really helps us mentally. I want to know everything about film, I want to know everything about on-court preparation, you know, even just how do I work with individual athletes, what pushes them, what hinders them, that kind of stuff. Uh, to be honest, I'm an open book. I really want to learn it all and just soak it all in while I can because it's flying by. Uh, I thought it was going to be a, a grind, like a really slow process with being back in school. I thought I was going to be dragging my body across the finish line, but it's, fl it's flying and I'm really enjoying it. And I think that's definitely how I know I'm supposed to be here because I love every single day. Um, whether we win or we lose or it was a bad practice or a good practice, I'm excited to be here. Just take that, control what you control, and like Nia, if you have to play the one, like don't you don't have to play it like Taryn, you gotta be Nia for us. You gotta just control you control, make easy reads. Coco, you're not gonna play the three like Brandy, play like Coco. Okay? We're good. Let's go. Oh, you guys can win this game. We got a green. Bring tears Wait. to my eyes. Michigan State comes into play today at 12 and 5. They are 2 and 2 in Big Ten play. Maryland enters today's contest at 15 and 2. They are 4 and 0 in the conference, the reigning Big Ten champs from a year ago.
Trying to get into the post. Now Charles drives. Gets blocked from behind by Sidney Cooks. McCutcheon on the right wing. Lobs into the post. Allen makes the catch and lays it in. That was a beautiful pass by Taryn McCutcheon. McCutcheon, left wing three. Book it. Taryn McCutcheon stays hot from long range. Michigan State has the lead at the break over number 11, Maryland. Spartans in front, 38 to 31. Gives it to McCutcheon. Transition, right wing three. Got it. 4-3 for Taryn McCutcheon. She's four of five from beyond the arc. For the McCutcheon, tries again from downtown. Bam! How about Taryn McCutcheon? And a timeout called by Maryland. Benda Johnson from the right circle, tries a two and knocks it down. Kennedy Johnson starting to feel it in the third quarter. Six seconds left in the third. Spartans push the tempo. Three seconds. Cauley into the lane, goes up, floats it home. Shea Cauley goes the distance in under 10 seconds to match the Spartans' largest lead of the night. Spartans looking to break it. Cauley across the timeline with two seconds to spare. Bob over to Agee. Oh, almost lost it. Now she pops for three and buries it. First field goal for Brandy Agee today. Jay Cauley at the top. Throws it to Brandy Agee. Then to McCutcheon. Here's a left corner three. Book it. 6-3 for McCutcheon tonight. Taryn right around the screen. Gets to the rack. Skips to the left corner. Cauley puts up a three. Buries it. First three for Shea Cauley tonight. Just her seventh of the season. It's over. Michigan State 82, Maryland 68. The first program win over Maryland. They snapped the all-time 10-game losing streak, and they hand Maryland just their fourth conference loss in three and a half years. That is a big program win.